Hey, Daniel Bach here from JumpScience.com. This is Speed Science 7. I'm going to be talking about how to train force production for top speed sprinting. Now, I just want to point out that uh, the stuff I'm going to talk about really applies to any explosive athletic movement. Okay, so uh, we're going to be covering an approach that you could use to get better at just about anything. All right. Then also, I'm going to be referencing um, isometric force curves. So if you have not seen my series on adaptations of strength training, uh, you should go watch that. And then I'll also be talking about the explosive performance window. So if you haven't seen my video on that, go check that out. All right. So let's start with a very simple uh, pseudo scientific equation here. Strength times explosiveness equals force. Okay. Strength is how much force you can produce. Explosiveness is how fast you can produce it. Uh, and the combination of those two abilities is going to determine how much force you produce during an explosive movement. Okay? Now the important thing to understand is that explosiveness is somewhat specific to the time frame of the movement that you're doing. Okay? So if we look at a high level Olympic weightlifter, for example, we would say that he or she is very explosive in the snatch. Okay? Uh, but the snatch is a relatively long time frame for producing force, okay, maybe like three quarters of a second. Uh, so that same person who's explosive in a snatch may not be so explosive when it comes to a running single leg vertical jump, right? Or take me for example, I've spent a lot of time uh, jumping off two feet, uh, that's maybe three to four tenths of a second of producing force, I get on the track, try to sprint at top speed, I'm not that explosive anymore, okay? so. Explosiveness somewhat specific to the time frame. Uh, being explosive in one thing does not guarantee you're going to be explosive in another. All right, top speed has the shortest time frame uh, for producing force in all of sports. It's about a tenth of a second. Okay, some will be higher than that, some are a little lower than that, depends how fast you are, but it's about a tenth of a second. All right, so if we're looking at an isometric force curve, you're trying to get uh, better top speed. You're trying to make improvements in this first tenth of a second. Okay, that's all you get. It's that little window and you have to make uh, force improvements in there. Okay, so because this is such a short time frame, explosiveness is in high demand. Okay, it's all about how fast you can produce force. So, because of that, uh, sprinting is dominated by genetics. Okay, uh, the people who are the most gifted explosively are the ones who have the best force production in this tenth of a second. And it's very difficult for people who are not as gifted to manufacture through training that elite level of force production in that tiny time frame. Okay? Training, pretty easy to make big changes out here, right? You can get way stronger, you can prove you're jumping a lot. Top speed is kind of like its own animal, right? And explosiveness is in the highest demand compared to any other movement, all right? So that's why they say sprinters are born, not made, okay? It's tough, uh, but let's see what we can do about it. So how do we develop explosiveness for top speed? Well, it's brutally simple. You have to sprint fast a lot, okay? You have to train yourself to produce maximum force within this tiny time frame and nothing else will do that for you because nothing else has that tiny time frame. Okay? So you can't get explosiveness for sprinting by doing plyos or jumping. Right? You can't get explosiveness for sprinting by doing speed drills. You can't get explosiveness for sprinting by lifting weights, even if the lifting is explosive. Okay? There is no substitute for top speed sprinting. It is its, uh, its own realm of athleticism. Okay? That's why you could take uh, somebody who is considered a very explosive basketball or football player and put them on a track against a sprinter and they will get blown out. Okay, It won't even be a contest because top speed is its own realm. All right. So what you need to do is you need to start sprinting fast, often, and build up a long history of doing that. Okay. Now let's say after 5, 6, 10, 12 years of doing that, uh, you have a long history of it, now it doesn't become as necessary, okay? But you need to have that history of sprinting fast. Two more points regarding explosiveness for sprinting. Uh, one, you don't want to strength train too much, all right? We'll talk about that more later. Uh, and then also you want to utilize rest, 
okay? Because when you rest, you get more fast twitch muscle fibers via something called the overshoot phenomenon. If you don't know what that is, go check out the Taking Time Off article on my site, okay? So I would say, generally speaking, when you're in your uh, track training time, probably want to keep two off days per week at least. And then when you're tapering, you might take like four or five off days, all right? Um, in your off season, early off season, if you want to take like a few weeks or a month off, that's okay. When you do that, you will get more explosive. You also get weak and slow, but you'll get more explosive. Um, and then while you're in your off season training, um, if you've built up a, a good block of training, it's not a bad idea to take a week off. Okay, that will help you get more explosive. So let's talk about on track training for the 400 meters or shorter. Um, I would just say looking at the widespread practice in track and field that there should be a shift away from so much conditioning and toward more speed work. Okay, and I just want to make a few points on that topic. First of all, running slower doesn't make you faster. All right, that's the most important point. Uh, second of all, if you are accustomed to running shorter sprints, let's say 100 meters or less, if you're accustomed to doing that, it shouldn't take that much more work to go from there to being in shape for a 200 or a 400, okay? A few weeks of conditioning is all it should take. So you don't need to put a ton of time into that. That means you don't need to condition in your off season, okay? Get strong and get fast in your off season and then get in shape when you need to be in shape. There's no reason to try to be in shape nine months before the season. Now, on the topic of conditioning, I wanna make it clear that running a fast 200 is conditioning. Okay, you're talking about sprinting for over 20 seconds without stopping. That is conditioning by itself. You don't have to string together a bunch of reps on short rest to make it conditioning. Okay, now certainly if you're running a 250 or a 300, that is conditioning. Okay, so you can afford to run faster and take longer rest and do fewer reps and you're still gonna get in great shape. Okay, so you could do three 300s at a fast pace with 12 minutes of rest in between, that's going to get you in pretty good shape to run a 400. Okay, you don't need to run eight 300s on three minutes rest. Okay, that's, that's cross-country training. Now, I'm not saying that slow training is bad, but if you want to be fast, don't base your training around running slow. It's that simple. So, we have talked about explosiveness. Um, you're going to get explosiveness for sprinting by doing a lot of speed work on the track and by utilizing uh, plenty of rest days. Okay, let's talk about strength. Now first, just want to be clear. Um, people love to say that strength does not equal speed. And they love to talk about how lifting too much can ruin your speed, okay? And those things are definitely true to an extent. But for as much as people talk about it, strength is still really important, okay? It is definitely part of the equation. For speed. Uh, fast people are strong people. Even if they don't have to emphasize strength a lot in their training, they're still strong. Okay? Just an example, uh, Asafa Powell can power clean one and a half times his body weight uh, pretty darn easily. Okay? Uh, now, I doubt Asafa has put a big emphasis on weightlifting in his training, but the point is he is still strong. Now, the fact that he hasn't had to put a big emphasis on weightlifting doesn't mean that you don't have to put a big emphasis on weightlifting, okay? Because you don't have the same genetic gifts, all right? Now, at the same time, if you find a sprinter, if you come across somebody who uh, is not particularly strong but is very fast, that just means that they're very gifted in this department, okay? Um, if you are not as gifted in this department, you don't get to train like they do, okay? you are going to have to make up for it here. The formula for you is going to be different than somebody who has different genetic gifts. Okay? So, strength is very important. You are not ever going to know how fast you can be if you don't get really dang strong. So, getting strong is very important for speed development. However, uh, strength training is slow and it's hard. So, it will reduce your explosiveness and it will wear you out. Okay, so we have to use strength training the right way for it to be effective in developing speed. Okay, so I just want to talk about a few categories of people here. First of all, if you can be strong without lifting, that's ideal, right? There are some people who 
are just naturally strong. And as long as they are sprinting and jumping, doing athletic stuff, they're going to be strong. Okay? And they're really lucky and I'm so happy for you guys, right? Uh, but most of us don't fit into that category. All right? Uh, next category. This is really common among high-level track and field athletes. Um, they use lifting, but they're doing a lot of partial range of motion stuff, you know, like heavy half squats or heavy quarter squats, um, maybe a power clean or a hang power clean. They'll do uh, these low box step ups, right? You see like a six inch or four inch step up with like 600 pounds on their back. Um, and maybe some back extensions or something like that for the hamstrings. Okay, now they're doing the partial range of motion for um, more specificity to sprinting, you know, getting specific strength for sprinting, which honestly I think is nonsense. Um, but they're also doing it because the full range of motion lifting is slower and it also will add more size in some places that maybe track athletes don't want size. Okay, so they're doing partial range of motion stuff. but they'll get really strong doing that. Uh, because again, we're talking about gifted people. Most of us, okay, this is our third category, most people don't get very strong doing quarter squats or low box step ups or hang clean, okay? Most people need to use like the best strength training that we have available, all right? Now, what is the best strength training there is? That would be the deep back squat. Okay, deep back squat is the best strength exercise known to man. It will transform you as an athlete more than anything else. If you improve your deep back squat, you are likely to also improve your clean and your snatch. Uh, you're likely to improve your standing vertical jump and your broad jump. You're likely to throw a medicine ball higher or farther. You will probably accelerate faster. Uh, people won't be able to push you around anymore, right? A deep back squat makes you a generally more forceful person, okay? Uh, so most people should base their strength training around the deep back squat, all right? And that goes for uh, sprinting and all other sports, all right? Now, the big challenge is deep squats and other heavy lifting uh, will make you slow if you're doing them consistently, okay? So first of all, you want to find... Uh, the smallest amount you can do and still get stronger. So if you can squat once a week and get stronger, great, go with that. Okay, but most people are probably going to have to do two or three times a week to really make some good strength gains. And if you're doing that, it's going to slow you down. All right? So you don't do that all the time. Instead, what you do is you take some time to build strength, then you take some time to uh, not do strength training and get explosive again, while hopefully holding on to some of the strength that you gained. Okay? This is where we bring back the explosive performance window. Alright, so we're looking at speed and how it changes over time. Okay? This is your explosive performance window here, or in this case it's your speed window. Okay? This is a range of different speeds that you could have at a given strength level. Okay? So, when you've been lifting for a while and you're worn out, you're going to be near the bottom of that window. When you uh, have been doing more explosive training and you've gotten a lot of recovery and you're fresh, you're going to be near the top of the window. All right, so your speed is somewhere in this window. Two ways to improve it are raising the window, okay, that's done by getting stronger, uh, or getting to the top of the window. Again, that's going to be by doing a lot of sprinting and resting a lot, okay? So first thing you want to do is get to the top of your window. You want to make sure you are as explosive as possible. You are uh, as fast as you can be at your current strength level. Okay, so you want to get to the top of the window. All right, hopefully you're there during your season. You hit some PRs. Uh, now what do you do for the off season? You raise your window. Okay, you get stronger. So you raise up your window. Now while you do that, you're going to move more towards the bottom of the window. Okay? Because it's slow training, it's going to slow you down, so maybe you're going to slip down here. So off season, you're not that fast, but you're getting a lot stronger, okay? Uh, season rolls back around. You back off the strength training, you let yourself get explosive again. Your window might slip down a little bit, right? Maybe it comes down to here, 
but you rest and you get explosive, you get to the top of your window, and now you've got more PRs, okay? So that's the formula. You train strength, then you train speed. You keep alternating until you're the best sprinter on the planet, right? All right, let's talk about some details. Um, during this middle phase, your strength phase, um, you're still gonna sprint, okay? Uh, sprinting, again, there's no replacement for it. So if you're gonna be uh, good at sprinting, you have to sprint. And you don't wanna get away from that for too long, okay? Now, that's more necessary if you don't have a long history of sprinting, right? Um, if you have been running track for a decade, maybe you can afford to go a few months without sprinting. Um, but generally speaking, I'd say you want to keep sprinting during, during this time. Uh, you're going to keep your sprint shorter and it's not going to be a very high volume, uh, but do continue to sprint. Okay? Now, during this phase when you are not strength training and getting explosive again, um, some people will be fine just not lifting at all. Okay? Others are going to want to keep some explosive strength training in there uh, in order to hold on to their, the power that they gain during their strength phase. Okay, so we're talking about like um, hang snatches or hang cleans, uh, jump squats, things of that nature. Um, things that will help you hold your power without having the negative effects that like heavy deep squatting is going to have. Okay. So some people need to have some strength maintenance, others won't. That's an individual situation there. All right, so there's different mistakes people can make here. Um, some people get too caught up with getting strong, right? They're, they're always raising their window, but because they're always lifting, they're always uh, operating near the bottom of their window, so they're not as fast as they should be at that strength level, okay? This tends to be people who are naturally strong, so they like to lift and be really strong because they're good at it. A while back ago, I had a sprinter contact me, asking me some questions, trying to figure out why he wasn't getting faster, and uh, he had been using strength training, and he was stronger than most people he was running against, but he wasn't faster than them, and he hadn't improved for a long time. And I told him, man, you just got to stop lifting during your season. So he did that. Uh, not too long ago, I heard back from him. He had set a personal record by eight-tenths of a second in the 100 meters. Okay, so a huge improvement just by not lifting in the season. Okay, so for him, that was the solution. Now that he's done that, so let's say he's gotten to the top of his window, now getting stronger is going to be part of the equation again. Okay, but the key is that after you get stronger, you got to let yourself get explosive. Okay? Um, on the other hand, you see a lot of people who are always near the top of the window, and they're just too worried about these little tiny percentage points of performance here. They see any little dip in their speed and they think it's a problem. So then they're never really willing to commit to getting stronger. So they never raise their window and they always have a ceiling on their performance. So one of the first track athletes I ever trained uh, was a 400 hurdler and he came to me not very strong. I said, dude, just get strong. He got strong and he took over three seconds off of his 400 hurdles time in one year. Okay, so for him it was a simple solution, get stronger. So what you got to do is figure out where you're at in this process, right? And then uh, respond accordingly. Okay, I would say uh, you definitely want to first get to the top of your window. Okay, get fresh, get explosive, um, see how fast you can be at your current strength level. Once you're there and there's not any more potential for improved speed, take some time to improve your strength. Okay, make some progress there, back off strength, get explosive again, and you'll get faster. Okay, uh, now the details along the way, I can't sit here and answer all of them for you. Okay, each person is a new puzzle to be figured out. So you got to uh, experiment, see how your body responds to things, and, uh, and, and just figure it out as you go. Okay, I really wish I could give you like a hard, fast formula, but that's not the way it works. Okay, people are different. So, if you've got any questions about this stuff, shoot me an email, danieljumpscience.com. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what your struggles are. We'll figure it out, all right? Let's make some fast people.